This episode of the Justin Bruckman Adventure is brought to you by Vintage Speed and Metal, the lifestyle brand for those who build what they love. Everything else is secondary. If you want some high quality merchandise, go to VintageSpeedAndMetal.com. They have sweaters, t-shirts, long sleeves, hats, and more. If you want to look as good as Bruckman and support the adventure at the same time, head on over to VintageSpeedAndMetal.com and use the code JBA for 10% off store wide. This episode is also brought to you by Mortgage Matt Northcott. When the bank says no way, try mortgagemat.ca. Mortgage Matt is always giving away stuff on his social media and this month is no different. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to Mortgage Matt's Facebook or Instagram page for more details. And finally, this episode is brought to you by The Rehab Lab. Melissa Biscardi is a registered nurse, manual osteopath, concussion clinician, and she helps busy people recover from concussions. She helps a lot of people in the greater Toronto area and beyond from her downtown office and online during quarantine, including including our own Justin Bruckman. If you think you may need some help, go to the rehablab.ca and contact Melissa Biscardi today. Yeah, what's up? We're good, we're good. Okay, what's up, boys? Hey, man, how are you? Hey, <laughs> hey, hey and we, re- we recorded that whole thing, so now we have like a blooper reel too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Coulter Gill, how are you, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing good, bro. I just uh, living this quarantine life here. The gym yeah. has been uh, shut down. I'm fight nights to be shut down. So just taking day by day. Yeah, man. You guys getting it pretty bad out there, eh? Yeah, we're pretty, we're, we're okay, but we have a high level of uh, restrictions here. Mm. So like our liquor stores are open, so we're happy about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but hey, our, uh, our restaurants are suffering. A lot of things are happening, but I think today our provincial parks opened up. Yeah, that's cool. What's good? What's good? Let's see what happens. I think uh, the gym's are phase three, July mm-hmm. maybe, but let's see what's going to happen. Let, yeah, let's hope so. I mean, I, I imagine we all shut down at the same time, but uh, yeah, it's been two months, right? Just sitting on my, sitting on our hands. It's it's scary stuff. It's scary stuff. Yeah, like scary we got to even even the place I work at. Uh, we were lucky enough to have COVID, but uh, our, our adjoining facilities have had COVID there, right? So, mm. uh, like, 37 staff had COVID. So, I, I don't, I, I don't know personally anybody. I've never seen somebody with COVID, but they're saying it's uh, once you get the uh, the stronger effects of it, like you can't breathe, you can't walk, or you can't leave your bed. So, it's a it's a dangerous virus out there. Yeah, it is scary. I've actually have a couple friends that have uh, contracted who are your your you know your family's happy and healthy and everything's cool. Like, what else can you really ask for, right? So yeah, okay. I'm good. I've, been, I've been spending a lot of time with my family these times too, with yeah. my kids, with my wife. And stuff. Usually, I'm very busy. I'm work, work, usually working about sixteen hours a day, mm-hmm. and now I've been home for like seven, eight weeks. It's it's quite nice in a, in a, it's a godsend. Not that yeah, in the, in yeah, the, right. It's that's the same life as me, you know. Like I've never really had had that much time to spend with my my son, you know. What I mean, because yeah. we hustle, man. We're always working or traveling or whatever, right? So, um, Jim is doing good. Well, it was really good as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Everything booming out here, and just we were having a great year. <laughs> then it all this went down, right? So, well, uh, well. Anyways, I'm glad you're doing well, and um, you know what? I was I, I was telling um my partner Josh here. I'm like, this is a guy I want to get on here because like we there's this um thing that the best way for me to put it you are the, i believe that you are the greatest canadian fighter to never be in the ufc so i think oh, that it's you. yeah man if, oh dude absolutely and i think that i 100 believe that and um so i think it's just, i think you have a story that really needs to be told because people have this thing in their head that the ufc is like the it's everything and i'm like it's not i'm like you need to see where mr gill went and then you'll know yeah yeah, yeah, you, you, you is good. All the credit to the king now, but like I, I had UFC contracts. I had uh, they have offered me fights to fight the UFC. Uh, they have offered me to fight uh, Henry Franca once. Mm-hmm. Uh, then when uh, the Canada versus US happened, uh, Stefan Patry he helped mm-hmm. us out when Sam Stout went Hamnik one. They asked me to fight Diego Sanchez. Mm-hmm. Right? I, I had I had offers to go to the fighter house, but but that back in the day, because I, you have to understand, I'm also 41, right? And back in the day, K1 and Pride were king back then. Yes, and uh, and I got the Pride contract after fighting uh, on the joint show with Pride and uh, Super Brawl mm-hmm. in Hawaii. I fought uh, Harris Sarmentos, I think, and so I got, I got a Pride contract. But then at the same time, I got the K1 contract as well. So I like K1 uh, uh, more back then because I'm more of a striker. So mm-hmm. I got the kickbox, and I got to do uh, MMA at the same time in the dream version. So yeah. I, I, I didn't take the UFC or the Pride contract; just stayed with K1. It was, it was a better yeah. decision for me. And I, I believe you, I believe that you made the right choice. Absolutely. So, um, so let's just back it up a little bit. So you, yeah, you're a kickboxer first, right? So 
yeah. how, old, how old were you when you got your start in kickboxing? Uh, kickboxing, uh, I, I wanted to be a ninja, right? When I was a little kid, like <laughs> I was 11, uh, 11 years old. So there's a program used to be called Shaw TV and they had kickboxing. We had like guys mm-hmm. like Gandhi Fields, Jazz Dylan, tons of guys, Rogers TV Shaw or something like that. It was like 30 years ago. I'm like, oh, I want to be a ninja. So I started uh, Kung Fu. And, I, and then I realized Kung Fu is garbage, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> So then I, ended up, uh, then I ended up going to uh, uh, Muay Thai Kickboxing Club, and that was it. I had my first fight at 12 years old. Uh, I went, to, I, I fought a real ninja from a, a ninjutsu school in Perfect. Seattle. <laughs> yeah, Seth, Seth Daly. I remember that name because I don't remember much. Seth Daly under Master Carnes. Uh, one of Duke, 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 Duke uh, something like the Duke from the movie Bloodsport, his name was, I think. Oh, one yeah, of that's right. <laughs> Frank, Frank Dukes, one of Frank Duke's students. Right, so all the ninja, and I was scared shitless. So I wanted grade seven, but I ended up knocking the guy out in the, in the first round, and I was never afraid of a ninja again. So then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then I fought his other older brother. He was sixteen, I was twelve. And then I fought it at the same time as thirteen years old. I fought his brother uh, something else daily. Right, and then I knocked him out in the, in the third round, and I was first. So I beat two ninjas in one year. Oh, you you fucked that family up forever, eh? Like just <laughs> yeah, they came back and fought me again for a third time on a tag team match. It was uh, <laughs> it was those two brothers, me and Jesse Sudu, <laughs> in, in Surrey, and that 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 match didn't go good for them either that time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but the master the, 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 the trainer jumped in the ring and tried to beat the shit out of me at thirteen, so that kind of sucked. <laughs> right? I was scared. I was scared of the big ninja. That's what I did. I did well. I did well. Turned pro at sixteen, so doing good. Yeah. How, and how many professional matchups did you have in kick- kickboxing? Don't know, bro. Who uh, knows? We have, yeah, yeah, we fought. We, uh, there's someone online that's saying I have had 15 fights, but I've had had 15 fights the first two years of my my career. But mm. Remember, we at that, that that time we fought without uh, internet access, any websites. It was internet, mm. but because we they we were talking like 1991. Yeah, internet was there, but it wasn't mainstream. But we knew about yeah. it, right? So there's no records kept. There's VHS tapes, right? So I think I have over 100 fights. No, no, yeah. kickboxing fights because I fought around the world. Right? Probably half of them weren't even re- properly sanctioned either, right? Like, no, 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 there was no sanctions. They're like, "How old are you?" I'm like, "How old do you want me to be?" I was like, 13 years old." <laughs> yeah, I tell you a story. I went, I went to go fight. I went to go fight Danny Steele, who was a WKA, ISKA world champion, number one fighter in the world. I was, I was like, grade 10. They're like, you want to fight Danny Steele? I'm like, fuck yeah, who's this guy? He was some light little guy. I'm like, I'll fight him. So I was gonna fight the best kickboxer in the world in uh, in Vegas under Master Toddy. I don't know if you guys oh, know Master Toddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Thailand versus the world, right? And so I went down, the, uh, the guy, like, how old are you? I'm like, well, how, what should I say? See, you're 24. I'm like, I'm 24. How many fights you've had? Because at that time, we had like 25 fights, nothing, right? So I had like a record of 110 or something, made it up. And luckily, luckily, uh, Danny Steele uh, backed on the fight, day of the fight, uh, due to injury. Otherwise, I think he would have mopped the floor with me because I was just doing it. Why do you go through the of a kickboxing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah there's so many fights in New Zealand, they fought in England, they fought in America, like so many countries. I was uh, I was ranked number nine in the world at 19 uh, in kickboxing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then I fought, uh, yeah, so by, by the by time, yeah, by 16, 16th, I was my first world title beat, uh, fight. Uh, Ray Sefo was the main event, Ray Sefo. Cool. And yeah, in New Zealand. And I, I, I just turned uh, pro at, at 15 or 16, right? So I went down there for, uh, for the world title. That was, it was interesting. I lost that fight because I didn't really understand how to throw elbows that time because um, mm. we didn't throw elbows here. We just threw knees. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so he hit me with a hard elbow and dazed me and the ref stops the fight. But I was in grade 10 and he was like 28 years old, right? So and it's fine. Yeah, that's <laughs> and amazing. Ray Saffo was the first uh, for a main event that night, so. And you went on to fight look, K1 Max, right? Yeah, K1 Max. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. So, Josh, you need to clap on you. Get, you need to go back and understand what K1 Max is. Because that, to me, like, that's like the scariest fucking tournament in the world. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's the best li- lighter weight kickboxers on the planet. And, like, man, Bokai was in there, like, who you fought. And then, like, guys like Dwayne Ludwig and, and oh, my yeah. God, just absolute scary dudes. And, Bar, Buakal, yep. right? Everybody's oh, wow. in there. All time kickboxers, best, best. So, and so you fought, yeah, Buakal. Like how? So they, like how that matchup come about? Like that must have been amazing. 
Yeah, because I, I like, remember you have to understand. Like now, now, now the uh, athletes has changed. It's more about endorsements, money, record padding, and I understand that, which is a different way of thinking. But when we fought, like, like say I was like fourteen, fifteen, we just make up a name, we make up a, a fight record and fight. And mm-hmm. if you if you if, if the guy's like 170 and 160, we just put rocks in a pocket and weigh it in, right? So oh it's, it's different. Yeah, it, ha- it happens, it happens. Right? It was, it was now that the Athletic Commission, you have internet, you have all these things. So so my mindset is totally different, right? I would fight anybody, anytime, any given time, any day. So uh, so I hadn't kicked box in about 10 years, right? Or eight years since then. And they're like, okay, I'll want to fight. I'm like, I'll fight anybody. He goes, oh, we're going to fight in three weeks. I'm like, I'll fight. I'm going to fight. He's blue looking up. I'm like, okay, who's that? He's like, oh, some Thai guy. I'm like, I'll fucking fight this guy. Right? <laughs> so three, weeks, three, three weeks, I started wrestling, started doing jiu-jitsu, trained three weeks, and went to Papua Bukal. It was, it was great. And uh, it, was, it was fun times. The funny story is because uh, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, what do you call it, absent-minded. Because I think all the punch drunk stuff, I don't know, getting punched <laughs> the face to it. I left, my, I left my mouthpiece in Canada, <laughs> right? <laughs> So, so I'm in the back warming up, and my buddy Paul, he's like, "Where's your He's like, "I don't know." I'm like, "God, oh, fuck!" This is my kitchen counter in Canada, right? You got a fight coming now, my well, whatever. So another fighter was uh, Lee. I was, I was I was backstage ready to jump in, uh, in my walkout fungi entrances. So another fighter uh, who lost was coming by me. I go, "Bro, can I pour your mouthpiece?" He goes, "Fuck, man, I'm bleeding. I don't care. Give it to me." So I took his mouthpiece, wash it out, put it on my mouth. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> 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 it was awesome. Yeah, because that's why like, people don't understand mouthpiece protects your chin a lot, right? And then uh, it keeps you from getting knocked out a lot easier. So that's why I woke up like, touched a couple of times. I was like, bang, I'm like, what the fuck was that? That was just a jab. And then I realized I didn't have a proper fitting mouthpiece, but whatever, I got to fight. Who cares? <laughs> awesome. Uh, who, else, who, else you, who else do you fight in K1? Uh, I don't know. Let me think. Uh, I thought Carl Ono. Oh, cool. Yeah, Kauno, uh, Kawajiri. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, Kawajiri. Uh, uh, I, I almost fought Sakuraba. Right? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, fuck that guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he was challenging me to a fight. I'm like, I'll fight you, but then he backed out afterwards. Like, okay. Uh, that's when I fought, then I fought Takoro. Remember, I fought Takoro. Oh, Takoro, you're right. Right. Yeah, because yeah, Takoro was just coming off a, a, a decision a draw against uh, Royce Gracie that time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Royce Gracie, and then, then he came to fight me. So yeah, that doesn't mean names I remember off my head and there must be more, right? So, yeah. So, so when, how old were you when you uh, transitioned from like the kickboxing into the MMA? Oh, yeah. So kickboxing, kick, kickboxing, I started with uh, Mr. Lance Gibson, uh, Mr. Yes. Gibson here. Yeah, I had an son because I, we, I was done. I was done kickboxing for a while, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing money in it. There was nothing really in it. That's so why I started working. But then I'm like, I'm going to try MMA. So I started with Mr. Gibson here for Moody, uh, which, is, uh, which is great. There's a lot of like my ideas there. I was there. A lot, a lot of heavy Tyler Jacksons. Mm-hmm. I, I want Mr. Gibson had like a very, very strong team. Blake right? Fred- yeah, Blake Fredrickson. Yeah. Blake Fredrickson was, was on there. There's a lot of world champions. It was a, it was a, strong, it was a strong team, team right? And he started the MMA there and it just excelled. There from right away, so I went pro. I don't, I don't know if you had amateur back then, but I don't remember. But I think I just went pro right away and just started shit kicking everybody. But yeah. the only problem is, the problem is in here in BC, uh, there was only like four to five gyms here, right? Mm-hmm. So the talent wasn't enough. So we just fought and did the best we could, right? We had arm bars, triangles, mm-hmm. you know, the basic stuff. That's when Brazil started. It was slowly coming up to Canada that time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we had great striking, and we had. Uh, uh, jiu-jitsu was not as strong but now now you have like 100 schools or jiu-jitsu yeah the powerhouse now but back then yeah. we were just more strikers so yeah so i rem- i remember the first time i ever saw you fight and it was uh i think we were in i think we were mfc in edmonton oh yes and, yes, and yes you <laughs> you fucking teep this guy in the face i've never seen anything like it like your heel touched his chin your toes like wrapped around his forehead and that and that was like i think that was less than a minute and then that was the fuck you know like, yeah, i heard your name before then i got to see you murder a man it was fucking i'm yeah. like that guy is fucking scary so <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's an interesting story so uh, when i was when i was with mr gibson uh there was a guy named carrie he was supposed to play 185 and he got injured i think fell off a roof or a roofing accident it's a, it was a small accident so i took that fight on four days notice and i, I used to be a 155 pound fighter and the fight's at 185 and uh, Mr. Gibson's like, hey, Colter, you want to fight? Because Kerry is one of our team members. I'm like, I don't really want him drinking. He goes, oh, let's just go. I'm like, okay, fine, fuck it, let's go fight. <laughs> right? I'm like, how much, how much do you have to weigh? He goes, how much you weigh right now? I'm like, 173, right? He goes, oh, you got to make 185. I'm like, okay, no problem. <laughs> so we <pour> down the- <laughs> <laughs> Pretty easy math. 
<laughs> we got we to move up to it. Okay. So, so we do the same tricks. I went down there. I drank like a two liters of water. I put a bunch of rocks down my pants. Right, I waited like a 183. I was like on point. I was like, yeah, let's fucking fight, boys. <laughs> so he was a big kid. I like, he was big. It was hard for me to take him down. Like, I had a strike. He was even because uh, I was still really 172. He probably came in the way to like 195. They had the fight probably. Mm-hmm. Right, probably gained like 15 pounds. Yeah, but luckily I won. I knocked him out in the first round, and um, it was it was it was good. It was the first time fighting for MFC, which was a great promotion. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I think, yeah, I think I think I fought at a nightclub. I think. Yeah, uh, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. I can't nightclub. remember. Yeah, nightclub. Yeah, nightclub. Anyways, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah that was the MFCs were fun as shit. That's where I. That's where I fought. Um, I fought Blake in um, Lethbridge at MFC. Oh yeah, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Years ago. Yeah, I so yeah, yeah, I didn't. I didn't come to the fight. I think somebody else did. Yeah, but and Blake's doing very well. Just so you know, too. He's uh, oh cool. Uh, he's up, yeah, he's a fat fuck now, but he's doing pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember I talked to him a few years ago and he's like, yeah, I'm like 200 pounds. I'm like, fuck, but so am I. So, <laughs> but you're, you're a good 200. He's not a good 200. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah. So like, I'm like, I'm trying to explain to you, to uh, clap boy here. So uh, you have, have you ever like really turned down a fight? Cause I look at your resume of like guys and you fought everyone you fought was a fucking scary dude yeah. right and just because they don't have that you have those three ufc letters beside their name doesn't mean they're not amongst the best in the world because i think we all went to japan because that's where all the best 155ers were back yeah. then right like even like when i fought carl uno carl uno just came from the ufc with a decision draw with bj Penn for the ufc mm-hmm. world title right and i fought him from a year later like hansen we fought him he was uh like pride champion mm-hmm. right from pride so yeah, it was it was a heavy duty guys, right? And people forget by then. Um, but yeah, it is what it is, right? And then uh, we fight, and then I, I I never turned on a street fight. I never turned down a fight because I enjoy fighting. Yeah, so, hey, it's not it's not winning. I was like, I was like fucking shit up. And I'm lucky <laughs> I've never I never got really shit kicked ever ever mm-hmm. not never in a street fight for sure. And in, in a ring fight, it's been dropped. Never got beat up ever. Even losses, you see the decisions. Right or, or or submissions, which I didn't know. I never got hurt, so I, I would fight. I, I even fight Sakuraba. I was going to fight Melvin Manhoff, right, for a few things, right. But then uh, just this contracts didn't work out, or the, the the promotions pulled out, and I was never afraid. Even 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 like 14, 15 years old, if I was thirty years old, I'd fight him and I'd win. I'd That's be crazy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, those stories that you'll you won't find on the internet because there's some videos of it. But around here, our, our local parts, some fighters like Reese Smith. Reese Smith cornered me a few times. He used to come here and help uh, help us out train. So he'll tell you those. I fought a uh, Reese Smith student when I was 15. And he was 20 something, 28. I beat him up at his own gym, <laughs> right? So yeah, we got the, yeah, we got the legit guys to verify the stories. It's just they're not out there, right? So yeah, yeah. Would I fight heavyweight? Of course. Would I fight anybody? Of course. So I even I had the last fight uh, last last year, right? At 41 years old, I fought a guy that's just heavyweight. I fought a lot, of, beat a lot of UFC guys. Fought for uh, Vladimir Putin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm like, well, whoever wants to fight this fight. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, uh, actually, you know, and sorry, uh, just giving it back. We're going to go TKO days. Is that, that's where we're going to go. So the next guy I saw you fight after you shit kick Kevin Dole was, uh, was Donald. We may. And uh, that was like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that, that, yeah. Cause Donald's a tough, tough dude. Yeah. He just wasn't, I think you came, I think you, I remember you came out and chopped his leg a couple times and it was a straight, straight right to the nose. And that was the end of the day for him. I think it was, uh, yeah. and then some ground and pound. Yeah, that, that was an interesting fight. Like UCC TQ, they set up a great fight. Like Janice Paul was there. Don, Don, uh, Donald Wimay was fighting that time. Uh, what do you call it? Um, GSP fought on the card. David Loiseau fought on the card. Mm-hmm. I fought on the card. I said, I said doing, doing, they fought on the card too. It was, a, it was a very impressive. That's when UFC got rid of the lightweight division, 155 division. So mm-hmm. everybody came and fought over here. And so we all, we all fought. And then the thing was, Donald, we met, like I said, back then, we didn't know how to, didn't really have an internet or anything. They couldn't really study him. But I saw him warm me up and his only thing he was doing was boxing. And mm-hmm. I love not doing boxers because they're so easy, right? Because he, I have kicks, knees, and elbows, right? That's the only reason. Donald's a good guy. So that's what I did. Because when he started boxing, he started chopping his legs, chopping his legs, chopping his legs. I said he couldn't punch anymore. And so when he couldn't punch, took him down and uh, punched. And I think I, think I TQ'd him, I think. I yeah, I think, it was, I think it was a TKO. Yeah, it was a bit of a... It was the first round, yeah. But those good guys, yeah. And then uh, Dwayne Ludwig, the friend of mine, he fired right after me. He goes, dude, it's hard to beat that record of yours because I knocked him out like a minute or something. But then Dwayne came back and knocked out Janice Palmer in like oh. two, five seconds. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, I didn't yeah. see that coming. We, we were talking about that fight um, a couple of days ago with Jonathan Goulet and like how violently he... Like he punched him out of the, punched him out of the rink. Like he tried oh, to roll yeah. under the ropes because he didn't know where he was. Well, he didn't know where he was. He was, he was a left leg and a left hand at the same time. 
Like yeah. as, as I remember, and you just destroyed. I think got up and just knocked him out. And nobody saw that coming. Jez Paul was a king, right? He beat me in Japan, right? He was UFC champion. I think he was on. I think he was undefeated at the time. I don't mm-hmm. remember, but he was man. The one fifty five division, and Dwayne just knocked him over like forty five seconds. It was really yeah. impressive. Well, these these guys, just, these MMA guys, get in there thinking they can kickbox until you yeah. meet a real until you meet a real kickboxer and realize that yeah. that's a bad strategy, right? Yeah. There is a di- there's a huge difference. Yeah, you can see that when you can see that Donald Cerrone uh, fights as well, right? Mm-hmm. Donald Cerrone's a big kickboxer, and when you meet somebody who just wants to box or anything, he just destroys their legs. Like when he fought Ali Alvarez, fought these guys, destroys their legs. Beat them, right? unless, unless you take Donald down, it's totally different, right? But if you fight a pure, pure kickboxer, it's very, very hard to beat a kickboxer mm-hmm. when you come into this boxing or M- MMA style striking, right? So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, shortly after we made you ran into Holanda, which is he's a hard style matchup. That guy, he's. Just, uh, oh, Fabio, Fabio, Fabio. Guy, yeah. yeah, 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 super, super nice guy. Like, and uh, but his yeah, jiu-jitsu is just out of this world. Like, jiu-jitsu is very, very good. Yeah, and remember, like that time we didn't really, we in the West Coast, our jiu-jitsu wasn't not as strong as well. Like all, all, all the props to Fabio, Fabio for winning, right? Mm-hmm. And we, we were, we were just strikers back then, right? So now mm-hmm. it was good. And then, um, yeah, then it took me a while to then I met Bibiano Fernandez. And then I got my just back to high level. Yeah, that was a good fight with the, uh, Fabio. It was a very, very great fight. We didn't, we didn't think he was going to make weight because sometimes he missed weight a lot. Yeah, he likes the guy likes to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can see him in the kitchen. Thanks, TV. Yeah, but we can go. Solid fighter. So, and then, uh, so you and you fought Super Brawl as well, didn't you? In Hawaii. Was it Hawaii? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that was Pride and Super Brawl both together. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's when I got my Pride contract because there was a, I think Lobby Lawler fought the same day, I think. Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah, but yeah, yeah Super Brawl, yeah. I fought, fought, their, fought, fought their champion, the Harris Mental. Uh, yeah, that's right. And you, what else you fought? Oh, man, you fought. I'm just saying, you fought, listening, this is my point today, is like, you fought everywhere in the world except for the UFC, right? So you fought Shooto as well? I fought Shooto. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Bodog. Bodog. Who'd you fight in yeah. Bodog? I don't know. Somebody. Yeah, somebody. <laughs> Rodrigo Dam. Oh, is it Rodrigo, Rodrigo Dan? Yeah, he's a Rodrigo Dan. That that was an interesting experience. It was great because uh, we got to stay there for like three to four weeks for Bodog. We did a reality show down there. Was um, it in Costa Rica? No, no, no. That, that was different. This was in uh, Saint Petersburg. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Yeah. What kind of reality show was it? I don't know. It was something. They wanted to do some reality show. They followed us around. We did this. We did that. We, did, we played some games. They put us in a, in a five-star hotel. It was, it was nuts. They had yacht parties. But I remember, I, I, I just did things. I just fought. I didn't care what I did. So we did some type of reality show. Like, I don't know. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but we all went down there and we stayed there. We just went down there. Even like Fedor's brother fought that time. Uh, Vasquez fought the same night as I fought there. Um, Jorge was down he fought the same night as well, too. Right, that's the that's name that could sit uh, from, from my head. I couldn't think of that. Yeah, there was, was a lot of a lot of talent that went through the, no that show. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even know who these guys were. The King Vasquez, I didn't even know who these guys were until later on. Finally, I was like, oh, these guys are the UFC champions and stuff. So it was cool, man. It was really cool. It's a good life. You know, I wish I could do it again. Yeah, no, it was, it's I wouldn't change too much, man. It's been a pretty awesome ride. So, mm-hmm. um, okay, so uh, I think the greatest. Uh, tournament of all time is the uh, is the uh, dream lightweight like grand prix personally yeah. and you got invited into that lineup which would to me like <clears throat> yeah I, it was all the greatest 155ers in the world yes, at, the, at yeah. that time and you and you're lumped into that um i admit I, I i just just retired and about two years before that went down so i kind of missed missed the boat and but who, yeah. who did you get in the first round of that one do you remember uh, I think I think I think I got uh, to Coral first round I think, and then I had then I was the, the, the second time I don't know I think I got to Coral then uh, then I fought Uno then I fought Uno and Uno beat me, right and I fought Uno and then uh, that, that's all I remember I remember <laughs> like in that in that tournament there was um, who else Eddie Alvarez was in that tournament yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he was in there. And uh, Jay Z Jay Z oh uh, Jay Z Calvacanti yeah um, Joaquin Hansen. Hans was in there. Uh, Aoki, Aoki was in there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Aoki, I remember that. Aoki was in there. I don't know which which tournament. I think there were two tournaments for those guys. Yeah, but yeah, but whatever. 
it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I'd say you're it's just to be invited in that tournament is is huge. Yeah, like because because I, I, I was I was invited to, uh, to the K, sorry sorry I went to the K one uh, turn tryouts here in Las Vegas. Okay, where, like two hundred eighty seven fighters came. Like uh, uh, Cerrone came, uh, Czech Congo came, a bunch of these guys came, right? And uh, and through 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 jiu-jitsu wrestling and uh, kickboxing, I finished first in that tournament. And so I got the one, there was one spot available, so I got that spot. And so then I got my K1 contract from them as well. And right the K1 on. contract was, big, was a bigger contract than the, all the rest of them. So right on. Um, I don't know. Do you do you, do you like that tournament format? Like, would you do you want to fight? Oh, I love that tournament. I think we. I think the audience like the tournament format, right? It's, it's exciting, different. yeah. I would like the one that comes out goes off. I think they changed it a little while ago. They made it only two fights in the end, but I think three fights, like pride fights, they were great. Yeah. Right? You know, so you all, all, all 16 guys come in one night, and it's how much is it? 16, 16, 8, 4. I think eight guys. Eight guys come in, and one guy leaves one night. I think that's a yes. great tournament. Yeah, I know. It's and amazing. It's, 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 but separate the boys, right? The boys and the boys, because mentally you got to be strong. The second round, you can come back after your body's cooled down. If injuries, they still come back and fight. Mm-hmm. And if you win, through. Ask Dennis Kang, good friend of mine. So I saw guy. him a few weeks ago. Yeah. Same yeah. thing. He finished second in the Pride tournament, mm-hmm. right? With a, with a, with a, with a, he fought with a uh, torn bicep. It was torn right off off his elbow area. All right. He taped it up and he fought, uh, fought Paulo Filio, I think, who at right. that, that time was undefeated. Right. So he fought Dennis fought three times in her, three times. He rocked it, loved it. Right. But it separates the mindset. Right. Is this not now? You know, now you're not, now you're not just a Facebook fighter. You're a real fucking fighter now. Yeah. A lot of guys can't do that. They need to have one thing and fo- one guy and focus on them for months to get in there. Right. Like you gotta, you gotta adapt on the fly when you're in a situation like that. Exactly. You see all those guys that's on tournaments. They're still fighting. Right. Now some of you are trying like a Shogun's are still there. Vanders and Silver's are still there. Tournament guys are always at Chuck Codell's. They're still, still kind of still there because mentally they're born to fight. Mm-hmm. Right, I'll throw it on any minute. Like Alistair Overeem did that too. He's mentally very, very strong. So let's keep fighting and all the all, everything to them. And all congratulations to those guys. I love them. Love fighting them. Heroes for life. Right on. So I'm just backing up through. Oh, hey, say, hey, you got to uh, fight in. in um... Uh, was it Super Fight in India? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Super Fight League was great. Uh, so what happened with that is like I retired after my last, the last fight in K1. Um, I don't know which one of that was, but I retired from that. And then that was it. And just hung out here, played with my kids, went on to work. And then I opened up my own uh, gym here in Abbotsford called Mumbai mm-hmm. MMA. So open that up and then I'm like, I still have it. But by that time, K1 has already gone down, right? Other people weren't paying as much money. So I'm like, I'll just hang out. And then Super Fight League contacted me. Hey, you want to fight? I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to fight. So I was 32 years old. And I'm like, yeah, I still came back and had, had two great fights with me. It was, it was, it was awesome. Was the uh, was the was the pay really good over there, or was it just kind of? No, the pay, pay was okay. Pay wasn't that great. I said, uh, no, the pay wasn't that great. Any 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 like third world country you go to, the pay is always not that best, right? Like fighting in Thailand, all that kind of things. The pay is not the best. It's just you do, it's doing you like to fight. Yeah. So, but then the SFL went down as well. Right after my two fights, so then I went back into retirement again. But yeah, yeah. I suppose it was good. All the Bollywood actors watched it. I still have to this day people from India still calling me to come back and fight the little shows, which I'm not going to do, right? But yeah, but it was played all across India on their on their on like their Fox Network type of guy type, mm-hmm. type of um, channel, like like a Sony, even like we have. Uh, I think it's all Sony down there. It's the same as Fox News we have or CNN. It was like one channel like that very big channel so everybody across india got to see me fight and uh, mm. i got i got to come out of retirement and fight again so it was very, very nice fighting my own country yeah is, is it like is it a big sport over there like here or is it no no, no. the only, only big sport in india is cricket cricket right? yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so now and wwe anything that has drama in it india loves it right and then now <laughs> more drama the better and the rest is like man right they have, they, have, they have some they have wrestling which is only strong in uh punjab uh, north of india which is good they love it but it doesn't really have kabaddi but on, on on a national level it's a it's mostly all cricket all right so um i actually want to back it up like um for you have uh a fusion in your neck don't you yeah i do yeah it's right here yeah, I got the same. I got the same one. I remember I messaged you like ten years ago. I'm like, how? Cause before I had, cause I think you had the surgery done before I did. And yeah, uh, I had the finals of the K1 tournament. I had to pull out of the tournament at uh, the finals. Yeah, three weeks before that. So that was 2007, I think. Maybe five, six. Maybe six. Yeah. yeah six, seven, 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 seven. That's crazy. And you continue to compete after that because I know after I got mine done, I was fucked. Like there, I wasn't doing anything else. So. I was, uh, I got there because I was, I was fighting. I was fighting a rematch with Carl Uno. I was, I was fourth in the tournament. There's only four guys left, 
And I was in a fight twice in one night, so it was great shape. My jiu-jitsu was good. Like I had Bibiano Fernandez in my corner at that time, so jiu-jitsu was just, uh, 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 just out of this world. And my cardio was good. Everything was great. It was 2007 because my daughter was born, I remember. And then one day I woke up, I couldn't lift my arm up. And I'm like, whatever. Like, what the hell is this? So I kept on running, running, running. Still trying to wrestle, but nothing, nothing's working. And uh, and then uh, I went to my doctor. I went. He sent me an emergency uh, MRI, and then uh, there was there's a disc blown in my neck. Mm-hmm. So then I got a, I got a surgery done, and then a week I just paid for it at the Falls Creek Medical. I think it cost like 8,500 bucks. I think it was right. And then six months later, I fought again. Wow, man, that's good. amazing. Yeah. That's not, I, 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 I never fought, but I did it. <laughs> 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 but, uh, I got mine fixed in 2011 and like, I haven't really done too much since then. You know what I mean? Like I've done some kickboxing and stuff like that, but like, and I kind of roll a little bit, but like yeah. it that was ruined after that. Now I have a bunch of other herniations I got to fix too. Right. So you're, it adds you're, up. You're, you're a smarter man than I am. This is yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. a, yeah. Even the neck surgery after that, even the India fights after the next surgery, right. I even need a jiu-jitsu uh, tournament in the world's. Of an next surgery, all right? Um, I like it. Yeah, does it click? Yeah, does it hurt? Yeah, but would I still fight again? Yes, I would. Yep. <laughs> I, re- I, can't, I remember. I remember one of your fights. That it might have been might have been Kawajiri, I think, or something like that. And you got taken down. You could see like ah, like when you hit the ground because I'm, I'm like that was probably what it was. Yeah, that's my neck. That's 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 the first fight I had after my surgery. Mm. Right, Kawajiri. So they're like, hey, you want to fight Kawajiri? I'm like, yeah, I'll fight him. And so, like, my buddy, like, you can't fight your next surgery. I'm like, ah, who cares? Figure it out what you're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, so, a lot of these fights I've taken, I've lost. I've taken like a one week notice, two weeks notice, right? You know what I'm saying? Because the few that have won, they give me good proper fire camp, like a three month camp. It was good. But see, my, my, my mindset is always fight time, fight any time, right? So, mm. and Dave Cow Jerry's like, want to fight? It was like a month, month before. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll fight. So, I started running, doing a little bit of jujitsu, the best I could, and, and we fought. It was great. Yeah, I get it. But, but would I? But uh, would I get my my fighters to do the same thing? No, I would not. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I would I get any of my students or even in my, my fight promotion, which I have as Mamba Fight Nights. Would I let somebody do that? No, because I got to take care of them. I just, I'm just, I just don't care about myself as much as yep. I care about the people. Uh, I can relate. You know, it's you know, it's our job as coaches and and role models and teachers to you know want better for our our kids and our students and they, yes. we don't, we don't need them to make all the same stupid mistakes we made. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's your, that's yeah, your real goal as a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Even my students are like Gaggy and Gil, one of my top guys. I'm so slowly getting him to fight, slowly getting him to like get proper fights from, but um, we're also continuing his education as well. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to be, he's not just allowed to be a fighter only mm-hmm. just in case something injuries happen. Uh, uh, it's a company fights for goes bank. Something happens. You still have a reliance on your education. You still have a job. So you yeah. can still go through your, your, through through your life, and then I'll feel good as a coach. But like some people, are like oh, just do full time fighting, which is great. You become a way better fighter, full time fighter. But the risk assessment on that is uh, incredibly high. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, to fights uh, going down, to financial problems, uh, um, family problems, injuries, right? A couple of bad losses, and mm-hmm. your career from here could just tank in like a year. And then yeah. You for your family year or anything else. So, so all my fighters try to make sure they they have an education and they're fighting at the same time. Uh, once mm-hmm. they have the education, they're still doing a part-time job or a full-time job, right? Just like, unless they make it to big time, yeah. right? Then you, you can stop your job for a while, but you know, your, your plan B, your job is still always there. Yeah. It's uh your win, your window was so small too, right? In the grand scheme of things, you got a few years to fight and then you're going to have to figure something out, whether you're a champ or not, you got to figure something out to do afterwards. Right. So yeah. it's also yeah. um, like, and I always say like fighters, you need to be like my fighters who have jobs, they, man, they're less or more, less work for me. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. you've had to babysit guys before, you know what I mean? So we yeah, have a guy yeah. who's fully employed and you know, he's responsible. It's less work for you. Right. No, less work, yeah. Cause I, I have some of my students that have the 50% of my energy just goes to like two, three of them. Cause they're yeah. all over the place. Then they're broke with money. Then you have boring money. I'm like, dude, just get a job. I want to be a professional fighter. So only so much you can tell these guys, like, yeah, you can become one, but you have to fucking pay dues. You have to work, right? You yeah. find a sponsor. You have to fight, and you just have to live, live and breathe fighting. Because you could, you could be, you could do anything, anything you want on your fifties and sixties, but you can't fight. You can't compete. Mm-hmm. So you have a, such a narrow window up to you're like 28 years old to make it. But if you don't make it, that's fine, right? But at least you have a job to go back to. Mm-hmm. But if you put all your eggs in one bucket, as you, you might know a lot of fighters who are in Ontario. Same thing. They put all the eggs in one bucket. They made it to UFC or they made it to a big show, and now they're broke because mm-hmm. they don't have original income coming in all the time. And yeah. as a coach, as the coaches should be seeing themselves too, right? You know. Yeah. The students, the students have to have to have a job. 
yeah. have to happen as we're fighting again. Well, you know, even if you do make it into the biggest promotions in the world, the money, it just isn't very good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, even a lot of these guys make like a hundred grand. That's just great. That's good money for one fight. But you understand the hundred grand, you didn't go for three, three months to uh, uh, work. Right now you gotta pay you gotta pay tax on a hundred thousand dollars. Then you gotta you gotta pay your uh, fighters. Then you gotta pay sorry your coaches and your management. So all that money goes. It comes in one lump. Anything comes in one lump always goes in one lump too. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. So you see, one fifty grand that's great. But that fifty grand is gonna go because all, all of a sudden you have money. You're gonna buy a car. You're gonna buy this, and then you gotta fight again to support the car, right? And if yeah. you get hurt, you can only fight once a year. The hundred grand is going nowhere. Yeah. Um, so while we're on the financial, do you remember what you got paid for your first professional fight? Uh, for I think it was free. I'm yeah, I know. you're a pro. Here's no money. You get a coupon. Fight me out, fight is broken. And then I think I got paid like 150 bucks. Oh yeah, I got paid 150 dollars. Yeah, yeah, 150 dollars. Awesome. Which I think yeah. whatever. I think mine was yeah. 200 or something like that, or 250 or yeah, something. Was, but who cares? And, and and one of my coaches, I'm gonna mention his name is somebody I haven't mentioned yet. He took 20 percent. <laughs> <laughs> why even bother you know what i mean like yeah all right he was my buddy anymore all right and then uh, i'm like yeah he took, he took 20. <laughs> i'm like what the hell is this you can take the whole 150 i don't give a fuck i just want to play yeah i know like i mean my first couple of fights it cost me more to get my medicals and shit than it did you know what i mean that wasn't even worth it wasn't even worth cashing the check by the time you pay for your meds and everything else like you were out so and now, and now, especially now with the way that training camps go, training is so expensive now. You know, I mean, you got to have coach for this and a coach for that. Like, you can't yeah. make money. Even, even now, if you want to make the top, you have to be training full time. You mm-hmm. need a jiu-jitsu coach, you need an MMA coach, you need a kickboxing coach, right? After, after like four or five fights, you have a certain coaches in each field and one one coach that brings everything together. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what some of my students are sending them to different gyms all the time. I can't teach everything right yeah. I, I could teach crazy striking i could, could be everybody striking that's not a big deal but then wrestling i'm good at it not the best it's just so good at it not the best right mm-hmm. so sometimes when my guys are training to be piano or wrestling sometimes i'll send them to different places gyms and local gyms and stuff and i'll take care the gist of the whole thing the whole mma aspect yeah right yeah it's so, it's so expensive if you, if you want to be the best you have to train at least three to four hours a day at least yeah that, that, that's the role i've taken on an area too where it's like uh, I'm kind of all the other gyms kind of come to me, but we have a way better. You know, we got a kickboxing coach and wrestling coach and jujitsu, and then I kind of like you know I kind of put everything together for everyone, right? So, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just as a coach, you don't have you don't have that much time and energy to 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 do all the work yourself, right? So you have to delegate and get it all out there to to yes. people, right? Hundred percent, hundred percent. And as you know, fight gyms don't make that much money, anyways, right? So, so there's a lot, yeah. So people are like, oh, you have a gym, you have tons of money, no, no. We're just we're just passionate about it, and you want to. Mm-hmm want to push the sport further like i went a long time ago somebody helped me out like my right. coach song listen long right so he, he, yeah. he had a gym he wasn't making no money he was working as a cabinet shop right but he was there for us all the time and made mamba who mamba is mm-hmm. right and all these fighters underneath me they came after me and if it wasn't for a song right there would be no mamba if no mamba these all these like 50 60 fighters we have they wouldn't be here either so if it's people like justin you like myself right yeah so we have a job on the side but we also help out uh, the, the 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 new new generation of fighters and yeah. they have to understand it right which is it's, not, it's, it's, it's selfish it's, it's selfless selfless thing we're doing right mm-hmm. we're spending time away from our families we're spending time away from our friends just so we've been in the gym for two three hours a day just to help you guys out to achieve your goals mm-hmm. so that's yeah. what I'm doing yeah, so yeah, we, we make no money sometimes we break even sometimes we lose a little money but but it's our passion and it's our duty to uh, push it forward or give it yeah. forward yeah. yeah absolutely right so um you, 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 I let you, it brings me to my next question because you're referring to yourself as Mamba. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, how did how did you get how did you get your, your um, how did you get your nickname to begin with? Oh, so after the K1 trials, right? Because I was like whatever, whatever, one sixty or seventy. I, I like I fought nine guys, right? And some of those guys went to UFC. I'm not going to mention their names. Uh, some of the UFC, some guys were big, they strike for bigger shows, right? But I beat all nine guys. And, uh, involved one one night of fighting and we fought like for a minute and a half only right it wasn't like a fucking three round three right mm-hmm. so a minute and a half years ago the judge judge like you won so i'll be nine guys so they're like dude you're fucking good i'm like yeah what's, what's your name i'm like uh i don't know called a girl <laughs> right mm-hmm. indian lion there's a bunch of names that i've been called he goes okay well you're gonna fight october 20th remember that day now well, okay so they, they came back and then when they came back they, they said called a black mama girl i'm like dude that's not my fucking name <laughs> <It's now>. <laughs> <laughs> so japan so i called him my manager mac Dican. i'm like what's up he goes oh yeah we named you black mama because you're uh, you're so slim 
and so fast and so lethal, right? We do the, even the trials, you know, drop a bunch of guys a minute and a half, even the ninth guy I fought one night, I dropped him too, right? He was so not Japan's gonna call you Black Mamba. No more that. I'm like, okay. I'm like, how much are you paying me? He was this much. I'm like, I'm gonna change into anything you want. Just give me that. Damn <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, man. So, yeah, but it's. If, if, they, if, if they pay me that much, I would have a chopstick. They pay me really good money. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, it's part of your legacy now, right? Because now you've got, it's Mamba MMA, right? It's stuck. So. Mamba MMA, Mamba Fight Nights, and everything is Mamba. Yeah, right on. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, like, we're curious if it maybe it was a, a Kobe Bryant uh, reference, but I like yours better. Yeah, I, I, I watched the sport. I didn't even know who Kobe Bryant was back then. So, yeah, I, I barely know Michael Jackson, Jordan, Michael Jackson, or those guys. I, don't yeah, I watched no hockey, no football. I watched nothing besides fighting. I just live and breathe fighting. Right? Yeah. yeah. Are, are you still a big fan of? Do you sit around and watch fights still quite a bit? I, I'll watch the big fights, mm-hmm. right? Because I don't have that much time, right? Like the, all, all the title fights I'll watch if, if I can. If I'm not, if I'm not working, so I'm not in the graveyard, I can't work it. Right, but I, I try to watch as much, much as I can. Mm. Have yeah, you caught any of the, the quarantine fights? Oh, no, I had no time because my, my family are anti-fighters. I have 20 uh-huh. women in my family. It's all drama. <laughs> 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 so we were, we're having a quarantine party at my family. So I was like, no fighting in this house. No fighting. I'm like, okay, fine, fine. <laughs> right? and so I couldn't watch it. But apparently there were great fights. Right? I, know, I, mean, I didn't catch any, but Clapboy was saying they're pretty good. Like it's funny, it's yeah. weird. I've seen a little bit where you can hear like everything, so it's kind of strange, yeah. right? So yeah. I, 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 I didn't see Dominic Cruz losing that fight, but he he lost that fight. That was, that was interesting. Yeah. And um, and then Tasharov just destroying the other guy. That was just nuts, right? I saw I saw clips of it on Instagram. So, so. the uh, the Gagey one I watched, and I'm like, holy shit, yeah, what a beating! It was a beating. Yeah. I heard about that one too, but I, 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 I didn't predict that one. I really thought uh, Ferguson was going to win that fight. And I, I, and I, and I thought uh, Ferguson was going to beat uh, Khabib as well. Really? Yeah. Was, yeah. Just, just because of the way, the stylistically, right? You know what I'm saying? I think, mm. I think Tony is a good wrestler, but I was thinking that Tony maybe was a lot better uh, 10, 10 Planet and Black belt off his back. I mm. thought maybe he could have caught uh, Khabib with some things. And by Gagey just came out strong and striking and the, the, the most of the clips I've seen, right? So, mm-hmm. so I, 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 I think those two fights are wrong, yeah. But I thought Tony was going to win the fight you know, all right off the bat. I know. I, I, Ferguson, Ferguson is never going to be the same after that, man. He, no, got, no, no, he, got, he just got destroyed. His body, his face, and mentally just, but he kind of a bitch, kept on coming and coming, yeah. right? So, yeah. right, so, all the pops so that's the thing, like a human being only has so many great fights in him. Right, only fights like that, and after that, your your brain starts going, and you just start diminishing so fast. Right? Yeah, some, yeah. Uh, some of these fighters have had like war after war after war. I'm like, wow, incredible athletes, but not many people can do that. Many people quickly fight, and they're they're usually done. Like yeah. those type of fights, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they do. They they'll take your they're taking years off your life, man. Taking beatings like that, like what if win or lose, you know what I mean? It's gonna it's gonna change you. You're never gonna be the same after something like that. Like it's traumatic, yeah. right? So never. so um. So do you got some you got some good prospects coming out of, out of your gym right now? Yeah, yeah we we're a good we're a prospect. Gagan Gagan Gill is our top guy, of course, as as you know, he's he's doing very very well. Um, he's um, they they are the Australian kid. He was doing pretty well himself. But then this whole quarantine things really put uh, um, plans in a in a, in a bump for a while, right? So Gagan Gill is a lot of the big big uh, promotions are looking at him. His record is still low. I think he's like four and one, maybe maybe three and mm-hmm. one. And he's leaving like five six more fights. Right, and so we're trying to get those fights quick as possible. But through this quarantine, we know what's going on. But you also you just watch watch Gag and Gill shine as soon as uh, soon as uh, this quarantine's lifted, and he can get back to back with victories, and uh, the, the big leagues will start picking him up after that. Right on. So, and uh, how awesome is it that you got to do one more fight on your own show in your own fucking backyard? It was it was awesome. It was just, it was just great. It was, it was the greatest fight ever because I started fighting in Abbotsford when I was twelve. And it's a, to end it on four, in, in, four, uh, in my 40th birthday party, it was amazing. So they, they, they came about on my 39th birthday party. They're like, hey, Mamba, what should we do? I'm like, I don't know, man. I've done so much, travel the world, done a lot of crazy things, right? He, I'm like, dude, I'm going to have one more fucking fight. I'm going to invite all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to fucking party, and we're going to fight, and we get drunk afterwards. Right uh, so 
over eight nine points that dropped off. But we sold we sold the tables all like there's a hundred tables. We sold them all like twenty four hours, which is which is good. And then we had like thirty five hundred to four thousand people there. So it, it was nice. It's not that big of a number for like you know for big leagues, but for it's a, a good show, birthday party though. It was a great birthday party. I guess. So at one point, one of my personal friends and family members on, on, on the VIP tables. Right, and then the, and then the whole uh, the, the community, a couple of thousand of them, and they just stand. So, yeah, it was good. Cool. I fought, I fought, I fought, I fought who I fought. Who I fight? I fought somebody that was big. Do you remember? Can you see who I fought? Um, I yeah, I, I got it somewhere. I think it's Anthony amazing. Ruiz. He did, Anthony, Anthony Ruiz. Ruiz. He didn't make weight, so I'm like, I call, so he's like, I'll fight you, right? So I talked to Alan. Started some guy named Alan, and uh, Alan, nice guy. He was a he's a promoter. In, um, in in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and he goes, "Want to f- find a guy to fight me?" So he goes, he goes, "How heavy can he be?" I'm like, "I'll be heavy as you want, right?" But te- technically, I want to fight 170. So then Anthony Ruiz, he's finished fighting in Bellator, right? And then uh, and he fought for uh, Putin, and Putin loved him so much, he gave him like a hundred fifty thousand dollar bonus, right? Mm-hmm. So he came. So I'm like, he's 220. He makes what weight can he make? He'll he he'll make 185 for you. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I'll, for 170, I'll go to 185. But he didn't make weight. He came in at 195, 187. <laughs> I'm not even close. Not even close. I mean, and I was talking to him the day before. Nice guy. All, all respect to him, but it's a story, right? Like, mm. his family here. He doesn't beat the shit out of me. He came in. I'm like, the day of the fight. I'm like, you're on a weight. He was, yeah, a couple hours away. And I'm like, you're on a weight. He was, yeah, I'm on weight. And he comes to the weight at 197. I'm like, well, and the commission almost canceled the cancel the fight because it was a percentage. He was, he had to be like, I forgot what percentage it was to be because I was dehydrated. He said, fight's canceled. I'm like, what the hell? He was one, but he's not even on weight. He's a, like, dude, I told Anthony, I'm like, dude, I would put rocks in my pocket <laughs> if, if you were that heavy. Just tell me the truth, right? But luckily, he went outside. He ran with garbage bags for about an hour. Came in, I made a cutoff, and uh, luckily we had that fight. But I don't remember what weight he came in at. Obviously. Yeah, right on. It was because uh, I remember uh, I watched that whole thing, and I was like, fuck, I can't wait for this. I saw you, I watched you plan it for like six months. It was amazing, yeah. and. Uh, yeah. It's uh, but I remember I think at one point you're supposed you're supposed to fight Marcus Hicks too, and I was like, don't fight Marcus Hicks, man. Yeah. Like you know, I, I, was, I, was, I was trying to fight anybody, but before the first fight was supposed to be against Dennis Holman. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, it was, it was me and Daniel Dennis That's Holman. That's right. Yeah, beat Matt Hughes, he, he, but he's a friend, remember he's a friend of mine too. But friends fight each other, right? Back mm-hmm. in the day, right? So, so it was supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be him, but then he uh, but then he he couldn't cross the border or some legal issues he had. So we had to scramble again to fight fight it. So then Marcus X, I'll fight you, Marcus. I'll fight you, Marcus. Maybe that was for a couple of days, right? But that, that went out the window. He did pass something. And then he had a bunch of UFC guys from America, but they couldn't uh, pa- uh, pass the border. So then we called my connection. So we, it was very hard for me to get a fight. I just couldn't fight anyway, anybody because of my record and my, uh, my skill set, right? Mm. So luckily, so the commission approved uh, Anthony Ruiz. Yeah, and then I got to fight him. So, was, and then he was already in training. So, right, you know, and and he, and he was active, all right. And he he just went to fight Shamanko and and uh, what did he fight? Mm-hmm. Russia and he fought a bunch of UFC guys. So he's still an active fighter, right? So then and the commission had no problem with uh, him fighting me. And he had no injuries, and he also firefighters so across the border. So, luckily, it worked out for us. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. No, it was, it was pretty cool to watch that. And man, like, cause how often you get to, you know, fight at home, let alone like in a situation like that. It's amazing. Right. So yeah, it, it was difficult. So I, I, I trained my own fight guys that did that, that time to fight that I trained myself to fight. Uh, that plus I ran the gym. Plus I promoted the whole show. Plus I sold all the VIP tickets. Plus I set, set the gym, uh, set everything up uh, for the fights. Plus then I fought. So mm-hmm. it, it, was, it was a lot of work, but luckily I won. So yeah. thank God I finished my top right. They don't say the I plus think is my daughter. She announced my name in the ring. She's like twelve years old. That's right. Cool. So that was yeah. My, my son, he was six that time, or seven, whatever he is, right, six or seven. So he got to watch me fight, right? And my family, my cousins, all, all the older guys, the came all the young guys, still so, all the gym still. So it, it was it was it was a great. Even if I had lost, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, but it, it, was, it was a great experience. Great experience. Right on. Yeah, no, I know. I got to do one kickboxing match here a few in, in my hometown, like a few years ago, and it was probably one of the best things in my career because I never, I never got to sleep in my own bed. You know what I mean? The night before a fight, mm-hmm. or or see my friends, and like no one. And we come from a generation where no one really even when we started, no one even really understood what we were doing to begin with. You know, you let right, let alone be able to come and watch it. Right. So to yeah, be able to yeah, celebrate yeah. and cap it off like that is pretty fucking awesome, man. So yeah, I was really happy for you. Yeah, and your family, your family's older as you as you fight. Your family's kids are older, all the young kids, and, and, and people that forgot about you were just as a fighter. They're now remember, oh yeah, I should just be a fighter, right? Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice to just end up in one house. It, it, it was very good for me. Right, my wife. Yeah, yeah. 
So in retirement, you run your gym and you're, and, and you're working in, but you still corner too, right? So you, cause you're always traveling with uh, BBN, right? Yeah, I'm traveling with BBN a lot. And I like a few other fighters I travel with, right? I, I, but the thing is, yeah, I run my own gym, a little construction company, we do a little, little bit of construction, not much. And then plus I, I work in the prison as well, right? Oh, you and, still, you and, still work in corrections, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my job, right? That's where we make my money. And, uh, so, and, and, and my promotion is taking off. We have eight, eight, uh, eight cards so far underneath us and uh, now it'll be the ninth one so the COVID is done but we're starting on fight league so we'll be doing three three to four fights a year in bc so everybody gets the opportunity and uh and then people can fight other organizations they all can uh, fight for us so what's your uh, what's your experience with one fc been like it's pretty cool eh yeah, it's good i also also i also have one fc contract which is even oh no shit <laughs> <laughs> just in <laughs> case <laughs> you know, I had contract I had contracts on everybody <laughs> uh yeah so yeah so in one is good they asked me to fight they just couldn't do it i think i did it or something like that and but now I'm, I'm a little older um yeah so one fc is doing good the good people down there uh they, they, they take care of the fighters so each, each fighter even before a fight they have to do an mri test on their brain mm-hmm. right and they have to do one after the fight to see like what your cognitive ability is, and mm-hmm. then every fight you do it, and if, if they see your cognitive ability declining, they refuse to give you fights. Cool. Right? And, and, and they have a great program where they uh, where it's on day weigh-ins, so you have to be on weight. So they they do piss tests, they're not dehydrating, it's tough mm-hmm. to be on weight. If I was fighting 155, I had to walk around like for a week at 155, 157, something very close by to that weight. So it's just so fighters are competing way better, uh, less injuries, less concussions, less knockouts, and it just all around is a great program. Uh, the, the regional shows can't do that because it costs a lot of money to do all those mm-hmm. tests, but uh, like a billion dollar company like One FC, they can do it, and it, it's just incredible. And, and they care about your athletes. And like, you know, some some organizations lose a couple of fights to kick you out, and One FC understands that you, you're valuable. Like everybody makes mistakes, things happen. As long as you go to war for One FC, worse, One FC has your back. One FC is a great, great organization. Yeah, we we went to a tournament in Singapore this year. It was like the World Amateurs, and I had a couple guys go over there. And then, uh, and it was it was in uh, one of Steve actually put it on, and it was amazing. And then we got to go to the we got to go and watch a one that which is a great show. Like it's, it reminds you of Pride, sort of, eh? Exactly, they do the Pride aspects, and they rock like soft kicks to the face, right? All the they they added elbows, which I'm I'm, I'm happy about. A lot of elbows. Right, yeah. Then they come out. The thing is, they treat you good, and there's no, there's no back, 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 back door fight. Nobody's yelling and screaming at each other. Everybody respects each other as martial yeah. artists. They fight. And it, it is, it is, it's a, it's a good model to know, especially for Asia, because Asia is more family oriented, right? So, mm-hmm. Yeah, they and, treat, and they treat it more. It's more of a martial art than a sport. You know what I mean? For those yeah. guys, it, it is great. One of one of these is a great, great, yeah, great, great organization. If I could fight for them, I'd love to fight for them. Yeah, but like the bodies won't let me. <laughs> Yeah, no, I got you. Uh, actually, something I had written down with of all the promotions in all the countries you fought over the world. Like, what's your, what's your favorite rule set, MMA wise? I love the one FC. One FC. Where you can suck the head, knee the face on the ground, elbow it, do anything you want. I love it. Or, I just wish they could go to a ten minute round, which is even better. Yeah, right? one ten, one five, five fights over. It'd be, it'd be brilliant. But one one of the rules are, are the best. Because elbow from the ground, you need you know, sorry, elbow, elbow standing up, knee, knee the face on the ground, you stomp the face. You, so I, I think stomping probably got rid of they took stomping out, I think. But yeah, but soccer, soccer kicks are still there, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah I, one, I, I knew that was gonna be your answer. I'm the same way. Like the less rules the better. You know what I mean? Less, yeah, yeah. 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 Long, yeah the, the first UFC rules are the best. No biting, no eye gouging. You don't, you don't want to permanently hurt somebody, right? On purpose, right? You know? Yeah. No eye gouging, no biting. That makes sense, right? And let, everybody, let the headbutt, headbutts come. Let Mark Coleman come back and destroy everybody with the butts, right? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so the general headbutts, one FC rules, in my opinion, are the best. And they're yeah. exciting. They're yeah, they're exciting. They yeah, they don't let nobody lay and pray at all. Yeah, no, they, keep it, they keep it going. Yeah, it is. And everybody wants to watch strike, so it's great. Yeah, I, I know. I, my my experience with them has has been amazing, right? They, but then again, you know, I've been to a lot of UFCs, and they're I, I really like their rules. But they the UFC actually treats their people really well, or just financially, they kind of could do a little yeah, bit better, they're, right? They're all, all these top organizations are top reason. They're good people. Like UFC is good. I'm not not, not bad about them. I'm I'm just saying one FC in my personal the way I think it is to treat the fighters a lot better. Mm. They pay a little bit, a little bit more, and they have better rules. Right. Yeah, but the UFC, UFC is still the king, right? They're, they're all like they're still the king. They'll be the king for a long time. 
Yeah. But, you know, I mean, after experiencing both, like I'd much rather go back over to Asia and have my guys compete over there. Like it just, I enjoyed it more and just you're showing a, a different level of respect by the, even by the fans, you know what I mean? The way they appreciate you, it's a little bit different. It's, 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 it's pretty, it's pretty nice. I don't know. I liked it. And any, t- any chance I could, I, I can take to for me personally to go to Asia, man, I fucking love, I love it there. Like I can't can wait to go to the next one FC. Like whenever they have the next one FC, I can't wait to go. It's just, just incredible. And the thing one FC, they do different different parts of Asia as well, like Japan, the Philippines, right? They'll do the Singapore to different places. You get to travel a lot, different places without uh, uh, financially hurting your own bank. Mm-hmm. Do you, hey, do you get a do you have a favorite country that you fought in? Canada, man. Canada's fucking number one country in the world. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not. Uh, I've traveled like so many. Con- I've tra- traveled every continent in the world, but Canada is the best country in the world, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, we have a healthcare system. We, we, have, we have political rights. We have verbal rights. We have the charter. We have so many things here that people don't, people take it, uh, uh, people don't realize how good we have it here. Yeah. Like, until nobody- you until you really get out and experience the world, like you don't know. Like this country is fucking awesome, man. Like it is nice to come home. Our healthcare system, a little bit tweaking, a little, little bit tweaking, but you have a good healthcare system. You know, you come and take you out of your house, right? You don't, you know, there's, there's no a law to you have to do in the military. Yeah, political system is pretty good, right? And everybody has a right. Even cats and dogs have rights here. So Canada is number one. Yeah. As, as for the country, yeah. But like, like for fight, fighting experience, I really feel like, liked fighting in Guam. Guam was nice. Yeah, eh? Huh. Guam, was, Guam was very good. It was a, a small little island. Didn't even know where it was. And it was hot. It was beautiful. The people was good. The food was great. But everything shut down at ten o'clock. That's the shitty part. But one was beautiful. Beautiful island. Yeah. You you just get going, and as they try to tell you to go to bed, that's no good. Yeah. And, and I kept on going. I have a story which I can't really tell you on here because people. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I think we probably have some of the same stories, man. Yeah, I got I got a lot of stories I can tell you over this. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you the shit I've done. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, fucking amazing, man. Like I remember, um, it would have been 2000, early 2000s. And like, it's, it's a part of the reason I want to, I wanted to have you on here is because there was two routes to go in the early 2000s when we were, when we were fighting and it was, yeah. like, and the, because the UFC cut the 155, there was, there was nowhere to go. And it, the best of the best of us all went over to Japan basically. Okay. And I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stroke you a little bit because, uh, at one point, it was like, I think you and I were the best 155ers in Canada. And I remember yeah. seeing you and I'm like, fuck me. I hope I don't have to fucking fight that guy. <laughs> like, but I figured it was yeah. going to happen. And I, but I actually ended up getting Blake instead. And, yeah, uh, okay. and, uh, but, and then, but if we still end up kind of the same group, like we went over to Japan and then you continued on. And, and, and yeah. I think, like I was saying earlier, I think it's a really important story to tell people that like, like, UFC isn't MMA, you know what I mean? And like yeah. MMA is MMA and it's worldwide, it's global. And there's so many more routes to take. And if you would have signed that UFC contract, you know what I mean? Who knows where you would be today, but you got to yeah, see yeah. the whole world and do cool shit because you know, you didn't, you didn't go down that path. Right. It was, like, it was more like, it was like, I, I, I had a, I had a financially, I wanted to be a lot stronger too. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was one of the UFC was good. The contracts they were giving out was like, minuscule compared to a K1 and pride contract mm-hmm. I got from guys, right? So it was like, okay, I'm this old. Yeah, but I, we, we never knew UFC was going to be that huge anyways, right? Um, so like, okay, so, and they let me have my own sponsors. They, they let me do my own thing. So at that time, it was, it was the right decision to make. Yeah, did I make the right decision? Yes, I made the right decision for that time, right? And, and now, when I made, if, if I was 2021 right now, if I had a UFC contract, I would take the UFC one. Now I would. But yeah. at that time, and now it's a tip. But keep now, I would, I would take the key. maybe the one FC or UFC will take one of those ones. Mm-hmm. But back then, it was Pride and K1, they were kings. So I went, I went, I went with the kings. For the most yeah. Event. Well, even it's like I remember when we first, when Antonio and Carvello went first went to the UFC, I mean, his entry level like 10 years ago now, but his entry level contract was so pathetic. You know, I mean, they just, and even now, they're not paying that much money, right? So, yeah, mm-hmm. if you're going to fight, you got to get it's the window small. So you got to get as much money as you possibly can. Right. So right, right off the bat, get, get the best contract. Or if you have a long-term goals, right. You, UFC will be good. Right? I know a lot of guys have a uh, long-term goal. The UFC for a while, the UFC is a PM to go to a bigger organization, but they get, 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 they get the net name established with UFC a lot. Mm-hmm. So, okay. And I got one more thing I want to ask uh, <laughs> real quick. When you, uh, you were in TKO or UCC, was it UCC or was it TKO yet? 
It was UCC, and then uh, we got TKO right after the second fight for them. Yeah. All right. Did did you uh, did you leave there on good terms, or did you, or did you have like a bad taste in your mouth from anything? No, 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 no. It was good terms. Uh, even even Sam and Patrick called me to fight uh, like Sam Stout, those guys too, right? But I had a bad bad injury, so uh, I, I mean, Mr. Gibson, I came up with a plan that I wear a gi, <laughs> right? And I'll tape my back up and I'll fight Sam. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mr. Mr. Gibson stopped me from that, but he goes, "Oh, that's not gonna work. You can't fight in the <laughs> Right on. <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah, we did that for a while, but then I just moved on. But the, yeah. the, 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 the bad feelings or nothing. Just uh, yeah, I had like two, three fights with them, and then other different opportunities presented themselves. So yeah. I went over. That it's just funny. That's a, it's a question I always kind of get to because because uh, Patri just keeps coming up in our conversations all the time with just yeah, he, 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 let's, let's just say he's, he's interesting person. <laughs> good, that's good. That's good enough for me, man. That's like he, he really he really is. But I, and I I shit talk the guy all the time. But MMA in Canada wouldn't be the same without him and guys like Pavlich and stuff like that, right? Yeah, so yeah. you got to yeah, take the good with the bad. Yeah. It is where it is. Any business you go to, there's always people. And yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. don't be one of those people yourself. No, no never. <laughs> never. Yeah, I pay my guys right out, right off the bat. Here you go. <laughs> right? I think right on, know. man. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm uh, Clapboy, do you got some questions you want to fire at the man here? No, I think that's it. Like, I, I told you, dude. Like, <laughs> like so, uh, the, it, people need to know that there's other avenues other outside of that that those three letters in the UFC, man. Like I said I I watched you for years and years and years and just like like at all the different promotions, all the things you've done, and you've always been you've always been on the top of my list when it comes to Canadians, man, uh, getting out there and getting it done. And uh, I've really I've really felt that it was important to get you you know get you on here and and, and share your story because it's it's unique compared to to most people that have come, you know, jumped on this road, you know what I mean? So it's amazing. Yeah. Um, do you got any, uh, got anything you want to plug on our, our show today? Mamba yeah, fight. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. One thing I'd say, but, uh, but the thing is the only reason I have the gym is it helps the new youth out, you know, give them opportunities and stuff. Mm-hmm. And for the fight nights, the reason we have a fight night is just for, so that like uh, shady promoters don't get a hold of the real fighters yeah. and they use them. And so that's why I remember fighting. I have no contract with these fighters. I um, mean, you want to come for one fight, you come for one fight. You want four fights, you come for four fights. You, you don't will always be home for you. But other, 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 a lot, lot of fight promoters, they, they lock you in five fight deals, six mm. fight deals, give you shitty fighters, or if you're doing good, build you a shitty fight. You know, shitty fighters do a lot of shitty things. So that's where we started the fight night. I'm like, I mean, I'm doing very well at it as well. I mean, if you have no place to go and, and you want a clean, respectable fight uh, contract, here it is. And you don't right want something for But I did one fight contracts only, right? You know? And then, yeah, and then I'll help you, I'll build you. And if you want to fight for anybody else uh, during that time, feel free to fight anyone else as well. Right so on. that's what we're going to do tonight. Right and then we'll do three, four fights. We're going to do tournament styles. We're going to do a lot of different things, like a K1 a style. Fight. But uh, we got to wait till this uh, COVID's over. I don't know uh, on my Instagram. You follow me at Colta underscore Mamba. And then we will uh, go from there. Right on. Um, sorry, one more thing. I I, I want to also acknowledge is like I know that you uh, you're very much like me, where you do a lot in your community, man. And I think because uh, I do I do watch you on social media, and I think I think it's amazing a lot of the shit that you do and you give back. Like I think it's uh, super important. I know, like. Yeah, it's what keeps me going. I don't get to fight anymore, man. So I try to do as much as I, I can to give back and and, uh, and create opportunity for everyone else. And I know you do the same thing. I say we're we're watching here on this side of the country too, man. I, like you, as you just you have a, you, you have a PhD in training people, yeah, right? Man. You have a yeah. minor, you have a mindset. You know, you you've been there, you fought, you got you got mounted, you got punched when you got mounted, you got choked. You know, all, you know these kind of things. So this is your duty as a martial artist to keep the fire alive and then teach people. We can't just teach people from the YouTube and books how to do jiu-jitsu yeah. fight, right? You've yeah. been there, you know, this is wrong, this is right. So it's your job to keep it up, even if you're doing two three hours a week. I tell every fighter, just keep, you know, your, your fights, your fighting career is done. Keep, stay in the gym. Could do the fact that uh, my, my my native friend uh, from Star Nation, Darwin Douglas, says a beautiful quote: "If a warrior has nothing to fight for, he fights himself." So you'll see those guys like if he's not fighting anymore. A warrior, I'm just not talking a fighter, but an athlete or or a businessman, right? They start doing drugs or drinking. They have no they have no goals left in life. So if a warrior has nothing to fight for, he fights himself. Yeah, so we see very, that too much, man. People. Yeah, it happens. It happens a lot, a lot of places. Like, like the fight just drop off, and next thing you know, they're just a bunch of drunks or something like that, right? Yeah. So it's just very good to keep your mind active and just keep and, and keeping the sport till, but but till you cannot. Yeah, right on, man. Those are those are those are good words. Um, actually, if sorry, and one more question. You still put the gi on all the time, right? Yeah, I I, I try to do much as I can. Right on. Yeah, are you black belt yet? 
Yeah, I got a black belt two years ago. Okay, I, I knew. I remember seeing a picture of you getting your brown belt. So excellent, yeah, yeah. man. Because yeah. I wouldn't let you live that down if you didn't finish that off. So no, I got brown belt. Me and Cage and Johnson. Uh, he got brown belt same time, and then I got my black belt from BBN a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. Just, there's just so much to teach, so much to do. So I try to put the gear as much as I can. Mm-hmm. And but mostly, of course, I like to strike, right? So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, right on. How's how's Cage? How's Cage doing? He's doing great. He's just awesome. I talk, I talk to him like well, once every two, three weeks. Cool. Um, same he's running his school. He's doing tri, he's opened up TriStar Vancouver. Uh, him and Rochelle. Uh, they're doing well. They have good fighters out there. A bunch of champions. Some of Mamba champions are there. Um, he, I think he wants to fight one more time. Um, cool. We had we had a bit of conversation, but like I said, but wait till COVID's over and uh, see where everybody else is cool and happen and a large right. gathering. Right on. Well, when next time you run into that guy, tell him I'm wishing him well. Okay. Awesome, man. All right. Well, listen, it was, it was, it was a really big honor for me to, to have you on today. I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and hang out with us, man. Thank you, brother. Awesome. Have Thanks a lot. Eh? Okay. Yeah, I'll catch you soon.